So if we have this circuit, how much charge is stored on this one farad capacitor? Because we know these capacitors store charge. So in this circuit, how much charge is stored on this capacitor? Well, the first step is we would redraw the circuit. We redraw the circuit. And again, we know this capacitor would represent this capacitor where nothing's changed. But now we would draw a capacitor that's identical to having a one farad capacitor and two farad capacitor in parallel. And again, we know when we have capacitors in parallel, we can see what they're identical to by simply just adding them. And again, we've learned this in previous videos. So if we have a one farad capacitor and a two farad capacitor in parallel, we know it's identical to having one three farad capacitor. We know three farad capacitor is identical to having a one and two farad capacitor in parallel. So now we have this circuit to deal with. So now we now the next step is again to redraw the circuit. We redraw the circuit. And again, so if we have a 2 farad capacitor and 3 farad capacitor in series, what is that identical to? Well, again, we learned the rule with capacitors in series. When we have capacitors in series, and you want to find what they're identical to, what they're equivalent to, you essentially, you multiply them, so 2 times 3, and you divide it by the, the sum of them, so 2 plus 3. So again, that would give us 6 over 5. So now we know... A 2 farad capacitor and a 3 farad capacitor in series is identical to having one 6 over 5 farad capacitor. They're identical to, and that, that's the rule for when you have capacitors in series. So now we know, essentially what we know is this capacitor is identical to having these two capacitors, and we know these two capacitors are identical to having these two capacitors. So now we know, essentially what's going on is we know a 6 over 5 farad capacitor is identical to having all these capacitors. So now that we know this, we can use this equation. When we, if we have a circuit and we know the voltage source of that circuit, and you multiply it by the total capacitance of that circuit, that equals the charge stored on that capacitor. The charge stored on that capacitor. So now we can use this equation. We know for this circuit it has a total voltage of 10 volts. And we know the total capacitance of this circuit is 6 over 5 farad capacitance. That's the total capacitance of the circuit. So 6 over 5 farads. So now we could solve this and we would get 12 coulombs. So now we know this capacitor stores 12 coulombs. But again, remember what we learned in the previous video. Why does this capacitor store 12 coulombs? Well, again, this battery creates this difference in electric potential. So now we're going to start to have these negatively charged electrons to start flowing. So as those negatively charged electrons start flowing, we're going to start accumulating charge. And that's why this capacitor stores charge. But we learned the same things going on here. We have this difference in electric potential, so we have those electrons flowing. And as those electrons flow, we're going to start to accumulate charge. But remember what we learned in the previous video, and I have a link of that video below. Whenever we have capacitors in series, they store the same amount of charge. So yeah, even though they have different capacitances, this is a 2 farad and 3 farad capacitor, whenever we have capacitors in series, they store the same amount of charge. And we learned they're going to store 12 coulombs worth of charge. So therefore, they're both going to store 12 coulombs worth of charge. Because again, whenever we have capacitors in series, they store the same amount of charge. But something else we learned in the previous video is whenever we have capacitors, we have drops in voltages. We're going to have a drop in voltage on this capacitor, and we're going to have a drop in voltage on this capacitor. And we explain that because we have a, this battery makes this lead high in electric potential, so, so a high voltage at positive 10 volts, and it makes this lead lower in electric potential, so let's say 0 volts. So now we know this, this entire part of the circuit is at positive 10 volts. Well, this entire part of the circuit is at 0 volts. So if we're at positive 10 volts here and we're at 0 volts here, we must be having drops in voltages. And the drop in voltage here plus the drop in voltage of this circuit must equal 10 volts. And that's why in total we have a drop of 10 volts. So now, how do we determine the drop in voltage of this circuit? We know in this capacitor, we know we have a drop in voltage, but what is the drop in voltage on this capacitor? Well, again, that's where this equation comes in handy. The drop in voltage of an individual capacitor multiplied by the capacitance of that individual capacitor equals the charge stored on that capacitor. So again, we know we can solve the drop in voltage of a capacitor if we multiply it by the capacitance of that capacitor. And we know this capacitor has two farad capacitor capacitance. And again, we know this capacitor stores 12 coulombs. So now we can solve the drop in voltage of this capacitor. And the drop in voltage we would see would be 6 volts. So now we know this capacitor has a drop of 
of six volts. We can do the same thing for this capacitor. We know the drop in voltage of a capacitor, the drop in voltage of a capacitor multiplied by the capacitance of the capacitor equals the charge stored on that capacitor. So again, the drop in voltage of this capacitor we could solve that if we know the capacitance of the capacitor, which is 3 farads, multiplied by the charge stored on that capacitor. And again, the charge stored on this capacitor is 12 coulombs. So again, we can solve the drop in voltage, and we would see that would equal 4 volts. So this capacitor has a drop in voltage of 4 volts. So we have a drop of 6 volts here, and a drop of 4 volts here, and a total 6 plus 4 equals 10 volts. So, so that makes sense. And again, we know we're at 10 volts here, and we're at 0 volts here. So that makes sense. So, so, so that's what's going on here. That's what's going on. We have a drop in voltage of 6 volts here. The drop in voltage is 6 volts here. And the drop of voltage here is 4 volts. And again, remember the difference between these two equations. This equation models the entire circuit. If we know the total voltage of the circuit, if we know the total voltage of the circuit multiplied by the total capacitance of the circuit, we, start, we find the charge stored on that capacitor. So this models the entire circuit. Where this equation it models an individual capacitor. If we want to solve the, the drop of voltage in an individual capacitor, that equals the capacitance of that individual capacitor multiplied by the charge stored on that capacitor. So now we know the drop in voltage here is positive 4 volts. So we go from positive 10 volts here, we have a drop of 6 volts here, so therefore this region must be at positive 4 volts. Because positive 10, drop of 6, so now we're at positive 4. And then we know we have a drop in voltage here, so positive 4, drop in voltage here. So, so now that explains where we're at 0 volts here. Because we're at positive 4 here, we're at 0 here, so we have a drop of 4 volts. So, so everything is consistent. So now we know this entire region, which represents this entire region, is at positive 4 volts. And again, we already explained this capacitor represents these capacitors, and we know we have a drop of 4 volts here. So therefore, in these capacitors, we have a drop of 4 volts on both of these capacitors. And again, we learned in the previous video, whenever we have capacitors in parallel, they both have the same drop in voltage. So now we know both of these capacitors have a drop of 4 volts. Because again, we have positive 4 here and 0 over 4 here. So in both of these capacitors, we have a drop of 4 volts. So now we know everything we need to know to solve the amount of charge on these capacitors. For example, for this one farad capacitor, we know the drop in voltage of that capacitor multiplied by the capacitance of that capacitor equals the charge stored on that capacitor. So again, now, now, now we, we have everything we can know. We can solve the charge stored on that capacitor. We know the drop in voltage of that capacitor was four volts. We, we already explained that. So, so, so the drop in voltage on this capacitor was four volts. We know the capacitance of this capacitor was 1 farad, was 1 farad, capacitance. So now we can solve the charge, which would be 4 coulombs. So now we know this capacitor stores 4 coulombs. That's how much charge this capacitor stores. And, and just for fun, what about this capacitor? Well, again, we know the drop in voltage of a capacitor multiplied by the capacitance of that capacitor equals the charge stored on that capacitor. So again, we know the drop in voltage of this capacitor was 4 volts. We already explained that. We know the capacitance of this capacitor is 2 farads. So now we can solve the coulombs on this capacitor, and that would give us 8 coulombs. So now we know this capacitor stores 8 coulombs worth of charge. And does that make sense? Well, again, we know this capacitor represents is identical to these capacitors, and we know this capacitor in total stored 12 coulombs. So therefore, these capacitors in total should store 12 coulombs, which they do. 4 coulombs plus 8 coulombs equals 12 coulombs. So again, these, these essentially are, are they model the same thing. So essentially, that's what's going on, and the key point is to be familiar with this equation versus this equation. This equation models the entire circuit. This equation models an individual capacitor.